Okay, so first I'm going to do a tour. And as you can see, uh, my lab is actually in my garage, in one end of my garage. And so I have a few shelves to work with and a table here, which I use to do some experiments, although most of them take place outdoors. So first, this is my main shelf. And this is where I keep most of my chemicals. You can see that most of them are in there, but there are some acids and there's some starch solution, ammonia, and some spirits and some oxidizers, which I keep separate. And my big box of film canisters, and there are my test tubes in there as well. Up here, I've got some water containers on the second shelf, which I don't use very often. I just use it to keep on keep the containers on. On the top shelf, right round here, are all my indicators and my crystal making kit. So I've got lots of different colours of aluminium potassium sulphate and stuff like that and I've got some pH indicator there. Uh, in the box are all the uh, very average chemicals that any home lab would need. So thing, things like, you know, nitrates and stuff like that, elemental iodine, copper, carbon and you know some very very weak acids that I made myself are in there. Over on the table what I keep here permanently are the caps over here for my test tubes. Now they're very useful if you want to stop some gases getting out of the test tube and uh, they can come in handy as you've seen in a previous video of me making a, a small explosion by popping a cap off a test tube. Here's all my glassware. So I've got 100ml beaker, 250ml beaker, 100ml conical flask and lots of jam jars which I use as well. Including this big one which I'm going to use to make nitric acid. Uh, filter papers and tins which I use to carry out chemicals if, I'm ta if they're taking place outside. I've got my labelling kit so uh, I've got a pen, labels. I've got lighting, which aren't exact, which aren't on now because I've got a flash on the camera, but uh, they're very useful for anything taking place indoors. That I have to use a stand for the camera. Okay, so now we'll move on to the chemicals I own and have bought. Okay, so first I'm going to show you my metals and non-metals. So in here we have some copper, it's uh, pretty pure, it's just a bit dusty at the moment. Uh, we have some zinc, there, zinc pellets if you like. Uh, here we have magnesium, just a strip of magnesium, good for, good for fuses. Uh, silica gel, which I'm going to use in a later video to make sodium silicate, which I'm going to use for a crystal garden. Uh, iron filings, and, uh, copper, more copper, There's more gold than the other copper or foil. Carbon, this is just a little bit of carbon I got from sugar. And then we've got iodine, which is in liquid form at the moment, but it's pretty pure. Okay, so we're going to move on to some very, very weak acids and alkalis in liquid form that I've made myself. So, in here we have lime water in there, which I made from calcium hydroxide, and then I've got sodium carbonate solution in there. I've got some sodium bisulfate solution, I actually need a bit more of that in there. And I've got some sodium hydroxide in there, which I've already used, actually, to make a failing solution. Moving on now to solid acids and alkalis that I keep in my box. So, in here we have uh, calcium hydroxide, which I used to make lime water. We've got sodium bisulfate, which uh, I use, which I made actually myself. It's not very pure. We've got sodium bicarbonate, which is useful for film canister rockets. 
Now we've got sodium bisulfate, a lot more pure in there. That came with the set. So we've got sodium hydroxide, uh, which I've also I've got a lot more of that that I keep on the shelf there. And then I've got tartaric acid, which I use to make failing solution. I've got a calcium carbonate, which is limestone. And finally, I've got sodium carbonate, which is washing soda. And moving on to the final thing, I keep in my big box, the salts. So in here we have, starting with sodium nitrate, 10 grams of it, I made it myself, might make some more. Uh, iron 2 sulfate, which is a lovely green colour. Sodium chloride, just ordinary table salt. Sugar. Uh, ammonium chloride, and white, white crystals. Uh, sodium thiosulfate, quite useful for making sulfur. Magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts. You can easily buy more of that if you need some. In here, I've just got some crystals that I made myself. I've also got some aluminium potassium sulfate, and I've also got some more crystals here. They're red crystals that I showed in the previous video. I also have some ammonium nitrate, which I got from instant cold packs, some potassium iodide, you can do elephant toothpaste with that, you can make iodine, it's quite useful. Sodium sulphate, I can make that myself quite easily. Uh, copper oxide, useful, you can make thermite and stuff like that with that, and finally copper sulphate lovely blue crystal that you can uh, make crystals with. So now moving on to all my apparatus that I have and use. So starting off in my old dog bowl we've got some goggles and funnels and some plastic petri dishes and a magnifying glass and a little beaker. In my red cup I keep Things like pipettes, uh, I keep a pipette, I keep a stirring rod, uh, clothes peg, glass tubing, uh, I keep a test tube holder, rubber tubing, corks, plenty of them, spatula, syringes, a lot. Here's my biggest syringe, which is actually a lot better than the orange one in the cup. Test tube rack for test tubes over there along with the film canisters. Film canisters I find are very useful for storing chemicals. You can get a lot of them for free from Boots. Uh, glassware, 250ml beaker, 100ml uh, conical flask, I should really get a 250ml conical flask. 100ml beaker, safety specs as always, a plastic beaker and uh, a meth burner, which I use my methylated spirits there to burn and it's a good source of a flame and of course plenty of jam jars and tins sometimes you can sometimes I usually just use them to carry things out into the garden if I'm going to do an outdoor experiment but sometimes you can also use it as a windshield and they're actually quite effective doing that finally some filter paper okay moving on to acids and alkalis not the ones that I keep in my box, they're extremely weak, these are more concentrated. So first, sodium hydroxide. I got this from this from home base. Don't know if it says anywhere what concentration it is. I think it'll, it'll be about 98%, so very pure. You can also buy that from Boots. Uh, and then next, sulfuric acid. It's very, it's very uh, clean, sulfuric acid. Uh, two molar. So it's quite weak, very safe. Next, uh, this is my hydrochloric acid. Uh, it's actually uh, a, a, a toilet cleaner. But yeah, it's quite impure. It's got a lot of perfumes and stuff in it, but it's useful, about 15%. Uh, 
and then finally ammonia. It's quite concentrated. I boiled a lot of a lot of the water in my earlier video. So moving on to spirits and oxidizers. Uh, methylated spirits is the only spirits I use. The only spirits I need uh, to to use for my meth burner. And uh, it's very useful. It burns really well and it's a good sort of flame, a safe sort of a flame. Uh, and then here we've got potassium permanganate, a pretty strong oxidant, uh, stronger than hydrogen peroxide, as you saw in my previous video. Uh, there's quite a lot in there, I think there's 100 grams in there, but I keep it in a film canister because it's a lot easier to work with than that container. And then, like I said, hydrogen peroxide. Uh, it's useful for a lot of reactants reactions a good source of oxygen and uh, yeah it's not quite as strong as a permanganate but it's still very useful and finally we have any other chemicals that I keep in my lab first of all starch solution on the left very easy to make boil potatoes in water collect off the water after they've boiled and uh, just boil into a jam jar you see at the bottom there this is a starchy substance so before you use it you need to shake it well to mix that all in that's a mistake that I made in my invisible ink video and then I have glycerin uh, very useful you can make fire with it and it's a good way of not having to use a match you can use glycerin and permanganate to start a fire rather than uh, using a flame next is yeast uh, the only experiment I use this for is for the elephant toothpaste, where it's a catalyst substitute for potassium iodide, which I've run out of. Uh, and then finally, water. This is very important. Uh, that water in there is distilled water, which I use for my experiments. But up here, I've got a bigger jug, which I just put tap water in for washing up. So it's extremely useful and any home lab must have a good source of water.